Hey everybody, how you doing? Thanks for tuning into the Zim Geek channel, and I know this is only my seventh video. I hardly have any subscribers or anyone listening to me on a regular basis, but I've just got to get something off my chest about this comic market. It's been eating at me ever since the first trailer come out. Now that the second trailer's out, we've got to talk about Captain Marvel. And what I've got to say might not be what you're going to hear everywhere else. I'm definitely not being paid to say this. My, my, my uh, channel is far from monetized, but I wish everybody that was beating up on the current Captain Marvel movie would just shut the hell up. I am so tired of listening to everybody talk about how, oh, Brie Larson's this cardboard character and she can't act and the movie's going to suck because the character sucks in the comics, blah, 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 blah. Stop it. Just stop it. You are comparing apples to oranges to pears. Yes, the Marvel comic is terrible. The books are horrible. I found mine at Ollie's and I've tried to read it three times now. I can't get through it. And it's got Captain Marvel meeting the Guardians of the Galaxy in it. And it is terrible trash. And we all know that people up at Marvel Comics who seem so single minded on this character have tried over and over and over again to do series after series after mini series after series trying to do something with this character that they just can't do with any level of quality to sustain any kind of readership right but there's a captain marvel movie coming out and everybody thinks that that's the character that's going to end up in the film and it's not it's not. Marvel Studios is completely different from Marvel Publishing. Kevin Feige actually has some talent behind him, and he himself is a lot smarter than what anybody out there right now who's dissing the Captain Marvel movie wants to give him credit for. Just sit in the back seat for a little while and believe the driver knows what he's doing. All right, so I'm not a shill for the Marvel Studios movies. I do love all of them, though. And if you have watched them all and have watched them from my perspective, which is the main reason why I'm doing the Zim Geek channel in the first place, is to try to give you my perspective on a lot of the comics and the comics media out there, you would realize that all of these movies that Marvel Studios is doing are gems. Back when I was growing up, they had Doctor Strange on the TV and he was dressed in underwear at the end of the film. Captain America would run around on a motorcycle and his shield was clear plastic. <laughs> Bill Bixby was Bruce Banner. Lou Ferrigno was the Hulk. Adam West was Batman and it was the campiest, most terrible stuff you've ever seen. These movies have grown up so far so fast and this audience has gotten so badly used to quality. That a lot of times this trolling attitude just completely dismays me. But then again, I'm the kid that used to watch the Marvel cartoons on a shoddy antenna with the best quality you could possibly get on a TV at home that only had four channels. And I realize a lot of you are out there are jaded because the same people that own Marvel own Star Wars. And Star Wars has really been, well, let's put it nicely, second class at best. Star Wars is not Marvel. And Marvel Studios is not Marvel Comics. You, again, are comparing apples to oranges to pears. Guys, you got to calm down on the misogyny. You got to understand that maybe there's a reason why Brie Larson is acting so cardboard in the trailer. You've got to understand what the plot of the actual plot of the movie is. I remember back when the first X-Men movie was coming out and they showed everybody dressed in their black spandex and everybody freaked. They said, oh, this is terrible. This is atrocious. They're not going to be able to move in those things. They're going to look ugly and, and the, the movie's just going to suck. But no, when the movie come out and they come out in their outfits, they were fine. They were just fine. It was better as they poked fun in the movie than using the yellow spandex and putting Wolverine in a goofy costume correct outfit. That's the exact same kind of assumption that you're making thinking that Captain Marvel is going to be a lousy character in the movie when she was a super lousy flat character in the comic. 
Look at the plot. The plot of Captain Marvel is actually pretty damn clever. Brie Larson's character in this movie is going to be a lot different than you Captain Marvel comic haters think it's going to be. Kevin Feige has already stated in an interview that Captain Marvel is the character that has the least legacy, that has the most blank slate. It's the one that the movie studio is going to build up the most, and that is really their risk with this movie. It's set up like a 90s action film. It's put back in the 90s for a reason. Everything that the Marvel Studios have done, every step that they have taken, has been a calculated risk. But in one form or another, especially since Guardians, it has been, actually since Ant-Man, it has been a hardcore creative risk. And that's what keeps Marvel Studios movies great. Just think about it. Can we do a bizarro character that nobody's heard of? That man comes out and makes money. Can we do a bunch of bizarro characters that absolutely nobody except uh, a few people in the comic market even care about and sell it? Guardians comes out, makes a ton of money. Can we throw all of these characters together? Can we redo Spider-Man for the third time in, what, a decade and a half and get away with it and make money? Tom Holland is awesome as Spider-Man, and very few people even talk about Garfield anymore, even though he was a much better, much better Peter Parker than Tobey Maguire. So this time with the Captain Marvel movie, the question is, can we take a character that's dead, that doesn't sell, and turn her into not just a powerful character, but a powerful likable character and the only way they're going to be able to do that is if you stop making bad assumptions that the character's going to be a waste of time so absolutely if captain marvel the movie ends up being a dog of a film these people need to have their feet held to the fire our anger needs to be raised up and we need to scream from the top of our lungs that this is not the entertainment that we want this is not the entertainment we deserve. But in the meantime, we need to give Marvel Studios the benefit of the doubt that they're not going to follow in the footsteps of Marvel Comics. Let them burn us first before we start getting angry and mad and throwing our hands up and knowing, oh, this movie's going to be crap. You do not know this movie is going to be crap. All you know is that the Marvel Comics character is bad, that it, it looks really bad, but it's being done by Marvel Studios, and it's not being done by Marvel Comics. Apples to oranges to pears, people. Also keep in mind, this is Marvel Studios. This is not Star Wars. Star Wars had three or four little false starts or horrible turns before Solo really lost a lot of money. Don't expect Captain Marvel to lose money even if it is bad, it's still going to make money. The Last Jedi still made money. Don't forget that Rogue One made money. And I don't consider that to be top form for what Star Wars ought to be. So it's going to take a while to build up to a solo level disaster for Marvel Studios. That's not going to happen with this film. Especially not since it's a bridge between Avengers 3 and 4. Just not going to happen. It's a new age of CGI. You can do a lot of amazing things, but everything comes down to the entertainment value of the script. Everything comes down to the storytelling. Everything comes down to the talent that's behind that camera. And there's a lot more of that happening in Captain Marvel than what anybody wants to give it credit for. Everybody wants Marvel to fail because they've made so much money and they're backed by the big uh, Disney Corporation. Everybody is looking at the next Marvel movie as the one that they're going to fall over their feet on and it's not going to be as big. You've heard that since what? Since Guardians? Since who knows what? Folks, Marvel Studios knows what they're doing. Now what you need to do is take what Marvel Studios is doing, the attention to detail, the entertainment value, and turn that back into the comics. Turn the comics to be more fun, more closer to the movies, instead of characters talking, instead of standing around worried about their past life, or I've got to go back and discover myself. 
The reason Brie Larson is acting so stoic in this film is that she has been played for a sucker by the Cree, who took her after she has an accident back to the Cree homeworld and they recondition her, literally mind rape her and change the color of her blood into making her think that she is a member of their Star Force police force and actually a pink skinned Cree. They get to use a controlled portion of her powers against their big enemies, the Skrulls, until she chases a Skrull contingent down to Earth. And that starts reawakening uh, her conditioning. She starts breaking all that conditioning down. But in the meantime, she is literally a brainwashed, uh, full card-carrying member of the Kree race in her mind. Once her conditioning is broken down and all those mental blocks are gone, she goes full binary and then starts taking out her wrath, not just on the Kree, but also on the Skrulls in order to end the Kree-Skrull War. And that was back in the 90s. If you look at that trailer, you get the whole plot of the movie. If you've seen Grace Randolph's video that she did back when the first trailer came out, she nailed the plot right off the bat. And I have not seen anything to deviate from that except for the fact that maybe it seems that cat that uh, they're calling Goose is going to be a scroll and maybe take out Fury's eye, which would be, you know, probably pretty silly, but probably pretty funny. But... This is a Marvel Studios movie. It's not a Marvel Comics movie. It's not off of a Marvel Comics character as just in likeness. It's off of a reimagining of that character. Quite frankly, if you think Captain Marvel was bad reading, why weren't you like this at Civil War? Civil War was unreadable. At best, it was a pile of meandering garbage, to, to say the least. But the movie was awesome. You know? Wasp at the time that Ant-Man and the Wasp come out. Just as bad, but boom. The movie is more than watchable. Movie's entertaining, and it's spliced together like a pearl necklace that that's all going to hook into Avengers 4 and hopefully to many more movies beyond. So in conclusion, can we please stop most of the negative trolling against Marvel Studios and a perceived terrible film? at least until that terrible film comes out. Let's give them the benefit of the doubt. Let's expect something fun because they have always showed us fun in the past. Let's appreciate the quality, folks. Let's appreciate the entertainment, folks. Let's not be so negative and so trolling against something that has the possibilities of actually being a really good film and not necessarily the story or the points that you think it's going to hit. I honestly think it's going to be a much, much better product than anyone right now is giving credit for, especially in the comics media where they're always looking for negativity. Let's not blindly jump to conclusions like everybody else seems to do if they don't seem to follow your particular point of view or believe that comics ought to be the way that you think that they ought to be. I'm not saying you should be empathetic to the comics or to bad quality or bad taste or if that movie is bad. I'm just saying that you need to double think your negative pre-trolling of a movie that you haven't seen and you probably don't completely understand the plot of. That has everything to do with being a negative, cynical troll and not a geek or a lover of sequential art or this art form or this media and the other medias that spring from this media. But that's just my two cents from a geek and a lover of sequential art who thinks the medium is just amazing at this point, a lot farther along than I ever dreamed it would be when I was a kid. Okay, if you enjoyed this, please hit the like button. Please tell your friends. Spread this link around if you think there's people out there that deserve to hear this. I think there is. And I hope, I hope this gets out to a few ears. All right? Well, take care. And again, as always, thanks a lot for being here. Thanks for listening. Thanks for your tolerance. I appreciate each and every one of you.